Today's fiscal crisis, it threatens all Americans. We are here today to debate legislation that accomplishes so much of what the American people want. Specifically, it begins to get Washington's spending habits under control. It starts to slow the flow of special interest handouts to the wealthy and well-connected. And it throws much needed water on the fire of inflation burning through the wallets of American families. Unlike the Inflation Reduction Act, the Limit, Save, Grow Act under consideration today actually does what it says it's going to do. It puts real limits on future spending so that we begin to turn the ship back in a more fiscally sound direction. It saves taxpayer dollars by call, clawing back unobligated pandemic spending, a sensible solution given the fact that the president himself has declared the pandemic over. It saves taxpayer dollars by ending welfare for the wealthy and loopholes for big corporations in the Inflation Reduction Act. 90% of these special interest green tax breaks go to companies with over one billion in sales. Financial institutions alone pocket three times as much as any other industry. And these tax dollars are being funneled to China, enriching the Chinese Communist Party and allowing it to dominate critical mineral supply chains. I know my friends on the other side share in frustration in how that law has ended up so different than what they thought they were voting for. In this bill, we propose pro-worker, pro-small business policies like work requirements in our welfare programs that will not only support a more vibrant economy, but also help more Americans realize the dignity of work. This plan will also take the target off the backs of low and middle income taxpayers under threat from a supercharged army of 87,000 at the IRS. The Biden administration brags about the 400 billion in revenues they plan to bring in by unleashing the new agents. To do that, audit rates will have to go up on low and middle income Americans. Uh oh, friends, this is crazy news. The United States is now expected to default by June 1st, 2023, unless a debt ceiling is finally raised. President Biden and several top lawmakers are expected to meet very soon to discuss a new plan. Economists are warning all Americans to prepare for big changes. My dearest friends, can you please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to hear about all of the details. Also, this coming Friday, I will be announcing several more winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then please comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. The United States risks being unable to pay its debt for the first time in history as early as June 1st. This is according to U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, who has just urged in a recent letter to House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and other top lawmakers to act as quickly as possible. Janet Yellen's update further underlined both the stalemate between legislators and the White House and the potential financial and political risks should the stalemate not be broken in the coming weeks. Yellen wrote in a statement, we have learned from past debt limit impasses that waiting until the last minute to suspend or increase a debt limit can cause serious harm to businesses and consumer confidence, raise short-term borrowing costs for taxpayers and negatively impact the credit rating of the United States. She also said that the debt limit must be raised or suspended in a way that provides longer term certainty that the government will continue to make its payments.
Janet Yellen rely on most recent data, including federal tax receipts, wrote that she could not definitively warn when the so-called X date for default would begin. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office estimated in a report in February that the default could begin sometime in July, but a June 1st deadline would create a new urgency for the world's wealthiest nation and the global economic system. The House Republican majority has said they will not raise the limit further without a compromise from Democrats on spending and the federal government's budget, which President Biden has always rejected, saying the ceiling should be raised without strings attached, as has happened before. The U.S. president called all four congressional leaders, Speaker Kevin McCarthy, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell on Monday afternoon and invited them to a May 9th meeting in regards to the debt limit. The White House said in an official statement, President Biden will stress that Congress must take action to avoid default without conditions and invited the four leaders to the White House to discuss the urgency of preventing default, as well as how to initiate a separate process to address the budget and fiscal 2024 appropriations. Reactions from the four lawmakers quickly broke down along partisan lines, with Speaker McCarthy touting a bill that House Republicans narrowly passed last week to raise a debt ceiling, while also enacting government spending cuts and reversing some of President Biden's policies. Speaker McCarthy said in a recent statement, the Senate and the president need to get work soon. His office did not immediately respond to a question about whether he would attend next week's White House meeting. In a joint statement on Monday, Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries pushed back on that view. We do not have the luxury of waiting until June 1st to come together, pass a clean bill to avoid a default, and prevent catastrophic consequences for millions of American families. So, dear friends, do you think that our government will ever come to an agreement in regards to the debt ceiling? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. At a briefing, White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre said that despite GOP arguments otherwise, the administration views a debt and budget separately and that Congress had a constitutional duty to address the ceiling. The U.S. can pay for most but not all of its bills with the tax and other revenues it takes in, and it must borrow the rest of the money. But Congress enforces a limit on how much debt the government can incur and when that ceiling, which is set at about $31.4 trillion, is finally reached. Lawmakers then must increase it before the government can borrow more funds. The United States hit the current debt limit in January and has been employing extraordinary measures since then to keep its bills paid. The U.S. Treasury Department has also enacted some cutbacks, including contributions to employees' retirement plans. Speaker McCarthy and other Republicans say the obligation now lies with Biden, who has not met with the Speaker since February. Mitch McConnell said last week, we must never default and the agreement needs to be reached between the Speaker and the President. The limit has been raised or temporarily suspended over the past few years, sometimes with protracted negotiations and concessions against a smaller tide of rising alarm, and sometimes without. Well, my amazing and most beautiful friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Thank you, dearest friends, for being part of this community and for joining me here every single day. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, I will be announcing more winners for this coming Friday's Walmart gift card giveaway of $75. My dear friends, if you'd like to enter these weekly giveaways, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. My friends, the more videos that you comment on, 
the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.